Now, if I could go back years and start kayak fishing all over again, this is what I wish I knew, what I wish I would have done, the lures I wish I would have used to catch fish in numbers and in size. And this is the gear I wish I would have had as a beginner kayak fisherman. Now that you have a kayak, you actually can explore every single inch of that lake, which could be a downfall for you, but if you adopt the 10% rule, you can really dial us in. Now the 10% rule is that the majority of the largemouth bass you are seeking are actually only found in 10% of the water. Now it doesn't mean that these all these bass are just hanging around this one stump in this lake, but what it does mean is that they're found in pockets of water that make up around 10% of that body of water that you're fishing. So what this means is if you're out there with a search bait and trying to find a largemouth bass and you actually catch one, that's the moment you should stop and study how you caught it. Because what you want to do is reproduce that scenario in other parts of the lake. So you caught it, did I catch it in three, three feet of water? What did I catch it by? What did I catch it on? What was the retrieval speed? All these things. Because as you move yourself around the body of water that you're fishing, you're going to try to recreate these scenarios, which are likely where the rest of the largemouth bass are hiding in other parts of the lake. And keep this in mind. If you catch a largemouth bass, largemouth bass usually travel in groups of two or three. And so if there's one there, there's usually a couple more. So don't leave bass in order to go to try to find bass. So stick around, try to hit a couple areas, change up your baits, and you most likely will catch another one, maybe even three. Now, if I was starting from zero, this is where I would start looking for fish if I was new to the sport. So what we're gonna talk about now is cover and structure. And the reality is this was super confusing for me whenever I started out, because a lot of people use those two words interchangeably, and they're actually two different things. So let me define it for you. Cover is going to be the stuff on top of the water. It's going to be your docks, your laydowns, you know, your fallen trees, your grass, your pads, your mats, your stumps, your beaver dams. Man, I love beaver dams. There's always fish hanging down in here. Here's a video of me just slamming some fish on a beaver dam. Now, cover is important in fishing because that's where bass actually like to hang out. They like to hang out there because it plays into how they feed because since they are a predator, they use this cover in order to ambush the prey. Boom, they're hiding around the docks because they can hide behind one of the pylons. They're hiding behind that lay down because they can hide behind that tree stump. And whenever an unsuspecting little fish comes through, pop, they slam it. A lot of the behaviors of LMB actually go back to how they feed. So it's really important for you to become an expert on the behaviors of a largemouth bass. And I have a variety of different videos on my channel that share things that largemouth bass hate. So check out that video, nine things largemouth bass hate. I'll put the link in the description below. Now structure is different than cover. It's actually the framework of the body of water you are fishing. So when someone is talking about structure, they're actually talking about the changes in the topography of the water they're fishing. Structure is important because not only do bass love cover they also love changes in structure especially if there's not a lot of cover so a lot of your structures are going to be your drop-offs your creek channels your points your humps your submerged island your bluffs your cuts your holes your saddles your flats and more once again they love these things because it plays into their feeding behavior. A lot of times you'll look up on the side of the bank and you'll see all these bait fish jumping. That's because largemouth bass like to push these bait balls up against the ledge because whenever a largemouth bass herd these bait balls against a ledge or against structure, it actually uh, limits the escape routes for those fish, making it easier to feed. So the ideal temperature range that bass love to feed in is around the 65 to 75 degree range. This is because their metabolism is primed for these temperatures to feed and this is why it's a little bit more difficult uh, when the metabolism goes down when the water gets cold to actually catch fish it's not impossible but you actually got to change up the way you're fishing in colder temperatures it's gonna be a little more difficult and it ch changes the nuances to how you should be fishing but if you're new to this and you really want to catch a largemouth bass whenever that water temperature hits 65 to 75 degrees you are gonna catch more bass than you usually do outside of those temperature ranges all right let's talk about gear for a minute I have a ton of gear on my fishing kayak and the reality is when I started I didn't but guess what I still caught a ton of bass at a basic level you only need a few things you need your kayak you need a PDF you need a paddle in order to get out there and start fishing now if you have yet to buy a kayak and you're actually looking to purchase one online or if you're looking to purchase a used one I actually just finished up a video called buyer beware the used kayak fishing 
buy-in guide. So that'll help you out. I'll throw the link in the description below. So let's talk more about your rod and reel setup. Now, if I was starting out from zero, this is what I would do. I'd walk my butt into Walmart and buy a spinning reel and rod combination set. So these are gonna run you, if you see them around $70, $70 to $100, this is the range that you're looking for. Uh, you're looking for kind of a medium, power fast action rod which is going to be the most versatile for a bass fisherman as a beginner and the reason that i recommend this is that this real um, rod combo casting is going to be simple for you it has great accuracy it's great for lighter lines and baits and it's great for mid-size game fish and sports fish so if you're starting out from zero this is going to be the perfect rod and reel setup for you without breaking the bank all right guys if you're getting some value out of this please hit that like button let's get this video out to more people let's move on to the fishing line so the three different types of lines which you may already know you got your mono your fluoro and your braid what i would recommend is getting around an eight pound test fluorocarbon and so what this is going to do especially if you're fishing clear waters i fish up here in northeast ohio a lot of my lakes are really clear um, and so i want the refraction rate of that fishing line to be virtually invisible to those bass so i've had, had a lot of luck utilizing the fluorocarbon line at eight pound test next i'd highly recommend i wish i knew this starting out when I when I grew up, my dad taught me the clinch knot, which is not a bad knot, the fisherman's knot, um, but I relearned a couple years ago the Palomar knot. So if you don't know how to tie the Palomar knot, one, it's really simple, two, it's really strong, and I created a 60 second video of how you can learn to do it. So I highly recommend adopting the Palomar knot, something I wish I'd have known a long time ago. And the two lures that I would recommend, you know, if you walk down the aisle at Walmart, you're gonna get overwhelmed really quickly. Or if you go into a fishing specific store, there's gonna be aisles and aisles and aisles of fishing lures. You have no clue what to buy. And a lot of these things can be expensive. So two lures that you should master as a beginner. These are things I wish I knew starting out. The wacky worm rig, and the Ned Rig. This is gonna allow you to fish the upper uh, column of water, the middle and the bottom column of water. And if you can master these, you're gonna catch fish in numbers and in size. So I got two videos for you, how to fish the Wacky Rig, how to fish the Ned Rig. I'll throw those in the description below. But really quick, these are not only inexpensive, but really simple to use. All you're gonna need for the Wacky Rig is a size one gamakatsu octopus hook and a five inch senko those are pretty cheap and for the ned rig you're just going to buy a ned rig kit likely at walmart it's not going to cost you a whole lot and you're, this is going to allow you to fish the middle and the bottom columns of water to pick those fish up if they're not on top you just have a five-year learning curve all the mistakes i've made i've tried a ton of different things and man i found a lot of success with this and i know that you will too hey guys thanks for watching i'll see you later bye